Hello friends, we have the second lecture on Singh's Riders to the Sea. We call it an analysis. We will pay attention to some of the details that normally we look at. First, let us see the objectives, then character analysis of Maurya, Kathleen and Nora. Then also let us see the character analysis of Michael and Bartley. One of the key aspects of the play is the role of the sea. We will understand the importance of the sea from the play. Then we will see the theme, form, language and literary devices used in the play. We will also pay attention to human relationships and reflections on life which we can derive from this play. We will also consider some takeaways from this play and summarize our presentation. The picture we have here is that of Maurya, Kathleen and Nora. We can find some other pictures like this. I thought I should give you at least one picture of Maurya. This was the performance we have had in some place. Let us see the objectives now. To analyze the characters in Riders to the Sea, the Vanak play. To explore the central role of the sea in the lives of the Aran Islanders. To examine the themes and form of the play. To study the linguistic and literary elements in the play. Then to discuss the aspects of human relationships and reflect on the questions of life in the play. And finally, to compare Sophocles' tragedy Oedipus Rex with Singh's Riders to the Sea. One is a great tragedy that is Oedipus Rex, another is a normal tragedy about a common woman, but we can see some similarity between the two. Here are the characters, we have seen them already in the first lecture. Maurya is an old widowed mother of eight children. Kathleen is Maurya's elder daughter who is about 20 years old. Then we have Nora who is a younger daughter of Maurya. The only son that we see on the stage in the play is Maurya's youngest and last son Bartley. We also have the neighbors like Eamon Simon, Stephen Feety and Kulum Sean. These are the neighbors of Maurya. We have some keening women their names are not given. We have Michael who is the favorite son of Maurya, but he has recently died in the sea. We also have a young priest who has some role to play in the life of the Aran Islanders. First, let us see Maurya. Whatever ideas we have gathered, these are all from the play. When you read the play, you will see all these points. You can easily get the play from the internet or from your library. Maurya is a protagonist, the central character of the play. She is an elderly woman and a mother of eight children including two girls Kathleen and Nora. She has already lost five sons and pleads with the last one, existing one Bartley not to go to the Galway fair because she knows that the environment is not good, the weather is not good now for Bartley to travel. She expects the priest, the young father to stop him from sailing. Some kind of counseling has to be given to Bartley or to anybody in the village. But Bartley does not listen to his mother, he does not listen to the priest as well. Maurya offers four major reasons why Bartley should not go. We have listed all the four reasons here. Bartley is required to make a coffin for Michael who is missing for nine days. Why a person who is missing for 9 days is likely to have died, that is the assumption of Maurya. Bartley also has to escape the rebuke of the local people. If a son leaves the place and there is nobody else to do the burial for another son, then people will say bad things about that son. She also wants Bartley to consider the dog starred moon as an ill omen. The time is not right for Bartley to travel now. She also wants Bartley to think of the precious life rather than a small profit that he may get by selling the horse that he takes to Galway Fair. We have more ideas about Maurya now. When Bartley does not listen to her, she is disappointed with her son Bartley and so she withholds her blessings. Normally, whenever the son leaves the place, she would bless her son, but in the case of Bartley, she is unable to bless him most probably because he does not listen to her. And another reason is she loves Michael more than any other son. She misses three opportunities to bless her son Bartley, although 
but he is polite and respectful to her. Just because his mother does not give him blessings, he does not disobey his mother. She is unable to explain her unwillingness to bless him. Why she is unable to bless her own son, she is unable to explain. She has a vision of Michael at the spring well, but it blurs her outlook. She brings back the bread meant for Bartley. Actually, Bartley forgot to take the bread meant for him. Kathleen gives the bread to Maurya and sends her to him so that she can bless him and also give the bread. But she does not do both. She does not give the blessing. She does not give the bread as well. Perhaps she feels there is no use in her blessing as Bartley's death is imminent. Probably she guesses that Bartley is going to die. She is frustrated that she will have no son left to look after her and her daughters. Natural, an old woman at her old age, what will she do? Unlike the priest, she has complete knowledge of the island and especially the weather. She knows the weather, she knows the environment, that is why she cautions her son, but the young man does not listen to the old woman who has all knowledge. Maurya realizes the loss of Michael and she starts keening. Until she had hope, she did not keen or she did not cry, but the moment she comes to know after the evidence of the bundle of clothes, she starts crying. She pays respect to the dead body of Bartley and also Michael with the clothes identified. She recounts her loss from her husband to Bartley. She mentions the name of her husband and all the sons. She is depressed, but then she is relieved that she has no more son to lose to the sea, which is an adversary. The sea is the antagonist in the play. Maurya blesses all her sons, Stephen, Sean, Shemus, Patch, Michael and Bartley at the last minute when she is doing the ritual, funeral ritual for Bartley. She feels bitterly about the young leaving the world to fend for themselves. What will the old people do themselves without the support of young men? She accepts her fate to live a poor life without her sons. If she has her sons, they would take care of her. Now, without her sons, she will have to live with whatever she can get. She will not have any choice. We see the first daughter Kathleen here. She is the elder daughter of Maurya and she looks after the house. So, she is called the mistress of the house. She works at the spinning wheel, makes bread, takes care of almost everything at home. With her sister Nora, Kathleen identifies the clothes of Michael and manages to reveal the news of death at the right time to her mother. She defends her brother Bartley and reproaches her mother for not giving her blessings to him. Whatever the son may do, it is good for the mother to bless. Probably that blessing would save the child. That is the idea of Kathleen. She is instrumental in sending Maurya to the spring well to hand over the bread and also to bless Bartley, but it does not happen. She reports how Bartley died and arranges for his coffin. In the absence of any son, now the elder daughter has to take care of everything including the burial of Bartley. She feels sorry for her mother. What else can she do? We have the younger daughter Nora. She supports Kathleen. She brings the bundle of clothes from the priest for identification to her house. She reports the words of the priest throughout the play. She now and then recalls what the priest said, so she shares those ideas with her sister. She mostly watches out for people's movements including Bartley and her mother. She looks in the cottage, looks through the window and sees the outside movements. She dropped four stitches in the stocking which helps her in the identification of Michael's clothes. She also notices the body of Bartley being brought to her house. She is sitting in the house, some people, neighbors, they are bringing the dead body of Bartley. She notices it and then tells Kathleen also. She reveals the skill of Michael in rowing and fishing. Michael is a capable person. He is good at rowing and fishing, but he is dead now. She also points out Maurya's fondness for Michael. Michael is a son, Maurya loves the most. We now see the last son who dies in the play that is Bartley. 
he is the youngest and last surviving son of Maurya. He appears briefly in the play to take the rope and change his clothes before he leaves for the Galway fair. He refuses to listen to his mother but does not show any kind of disrespect to her. He is aware of the dangers of the sea but risks his life for some small profit to help the family. Why does he want to take the risk? If he does not take the risk, he cannot get some profit. He is forced by circumstances to undertake the perilous journey as the arrival of the next boat is uncertain. The vessel is a boat. The island is far away. Many boats do not come every day. Only now and then they will come. So, he is interested in making use of the current opportunity. He rides a red mare followed by the grey pony. That is what he is going to sell there. He continues to bless his mother though he does not get any blessing from his mother. His neighbors bring his dead body for the last rites at the end of the play. Michael is the son of Maurya who she always loves, who she remembers often. He has been missing for 9 days but his clothes have been handed over to Nora by the priest. Maurya waits for his return or his body for some time. Maurya's vision of Michael and the clothes of Michael have some kind of control over the play. Michael has left a stick he has bought from Kanimara to his mother. He is the most affectionate son of Maurya. As we noted from Nora, he is considered to be a great rover and a fisher. A coffin has been prepared for him, but then this coffin is used for Bartley at the end. The death of Michael and Bartley is mourned at the end of the play. Now, let us come to the sea. The sea plays a vital role in the play. The title says riders to the sea. The sea on the one hand, the riders, the horse riders, the sons of Maurya on the other hand. We have these two contrasts. The sea is present in the title of the play itself. That means, it is very important. The sea is both a provider and a killer. It provides for the livelihood of people. At the same time, it takes the life of people who go there for fishing or who sail over the sea. The sea is always pervasive by its roaring and winds. The sea is a competitor to the mother in keeping the sons. The sea like a mother, she also wants to take the sons. Maurya knows the sea very well. She has good knowledge of the sea, all its movements. Even the pony works in hands and glow with the sea. The pony also understands the requirement of the sea. So, when uh, Michael is riding the pony, it uh, uh, slips and so Michael falls into the sea. The sea separates the islanders and secures their identity. The sea in spite of all its um, negative qualities keeps the identity of the people distinct. The sea appears like an insurmountable fate. We cannot overcome it. We have to accept the sea as it is. When all sons are lost, Maurya has nothing more to lose to the sea which is considered an adversary that is the antagonist in the play. Let us see the thematic contrast now. Obviously, we have the contrast between life and death, the land and the sea, traditional modernity. The islanders follow a traditional life whereas, the people in the city in the mainland they follow the modern life. We have man on the one hand and nature on the other hand. Similarly, we also find men on the one hand and women on the other. We find parents and children, islanders and outsiders, Christians and pagans. Christians follow the ideas of the priest. There are also pagans who worship nature or uh, pre-Christian uh, people are there in the island. We have poverty of the poor people in the island and affluence of the rich people on the mainland. We have forgetting and remembering as well. Maurya remembers all her sons, but she has to forget them. Let us remember that this is a one act play, a brief and concentrated play. It is a tragedy, but not a tragedy like Aristotelian tragedy. It is not a tragedy of an individual, but a tragedy of the community, the Aran Islanders. That is what one critic says. It is also not a realistic play, despite the resemblance of real settings. V. S. Pritchett calls the play a genuine tragedy. 
it is a play of pathetic experience according to Donahue. We have main characters and also minor characters in the play. The main character is the mother and Bartley and also Michael and we have all other characters in the play. The crucial action of riders being lost in the sea is the focus of the play. The sea takes all of them to itself. Let us see the language of the play. We have to remember that Singh contributed to the Irish literary renaissance by using Irish themes, Irish subjects, Irish language. So, he wrote the play in the Hiberno that is Irish English dialect used in the Aran Islands. So, when you read the play, you will find that this is not like the standard English used in London or any other place. For example, we have one word called poutine, it means alcoholic drink illegally made from potatoes. We may not find that in standard English. The language is simple as it is in the spoken form. We also have the language of death and inevitability in the play. We have dark and black which are often used in the play. For example, dark night, black night, black feet, black hags, black cliffs, black or grey pony. The blackness may be a kind of symbol for death that is what we have in the play. We have a contrast between the dark and the white. So, we have white boards, new rope, white turf and probably the white and black represent life and death. We have some literary devices in the play like irony, allusion and symbolism. Of course, irony is a major device used in the play. Maurya lives to a ripe age to see all her six sons die. The young people leave some things for the old people to use, but they themselves die. The mother refuses to bless her son despite having three opportunities. A mother is unable to prevent her son from dying. The sea is both a provider and also a destroyer. We have an allusion to Bride Dara. Bride Dara is a woman who had a vision of her child in the arms of her dead husband and that is a kind of similarity that we can find in the case of Maurya and her sons. We have the symbolism of the sea, the rope, the red mare for death. We have a lot about human relationships in the play. Environmental and economic conditions we have to remember affect the nature of relationships between people in a family. When a family responsibility is shared, life moves smoothly even though there may be a series of losses. Hence, the family's contact with the larger community is essential to tide over critical situations. Maurya suffers giving birth to six boys and she loses all of them to the sea. Kathleen and Nora play their role as daughters responsibly and manage their mother and brothers as well. Bartley takes a risk against his mother's wishes due to the transitional changes in the island life. When you read about this island and the people of this time, you will understand that the city or the mainland has some impact on the island people. The island people are forced to earn some more money to provide for themselves. That is why Bartley influenced by the mainland goes to that fair and on the way he dies. We have some questions for the topic reflections on life. Why does an old mother lose all her men folk? Why do the young die before the elders? This is another major question that you can find relevant to all places and times. Why does nature fail human beings? Why does religion also fail Bartley and Maurya? They believe in God, but God fails them. Why is the life of a young man bound to death like this? Why does the rowing skill of Michael abandon him? He is a good rower, good fisher that means he is a good swimmer as well. He knows the ways of the sea, still he is unable to escape. Why? Why does Maurya miss the nails for the coffin? She prepares a coffin, but she does not have the nails to close it. A man asks Maurya how come she missed the nails? Next, we have the question, how do human beings deal with the inevitable death? When death appears, how do we deal with it? At last, we have a question, how does a society change for both good and bad? A society changes, 
and it changes for both good and bad and how does it do it? These are some of the questions that we have for this play. We do not have definite answers, some glimpses of answers we have given in the discussion of this play. Let us compare Sophocles and sing now. Oedipus Rex by Sophocles is a Greek tragedy. The audience were aware of the end of the play. Oedipus would die that is the knowledge that the audience Greek audience would already know. We have the choral function to comment on the happenings in the life of Oedipus and his people. There are certain mysteries beyond human understanding as presented by Sophocles in Oedipus Rex. The whole idea is about death, the death of the individual, the decay of the whole society. Sophocles at the end of the play says in Oedipus Rex, call no man happy until he is dead. We have some kind of similarity here between Sophocles and Singh. Riders to the Sea is an Irish tragedy. The audience is also likely to be aware of the loss of all sons. Maurya has a choral function to comment on the difficult lives of people on the island, how they live with so many difficulties. In the case of Riders to the Sea, nature affects the fate of the people. Here also we have death as a deliverer. All people die and they are delivered from the difficulties of life. At the end of Riders to the Sea, we have the statement, no man at all can be living forever. One has to die one day. What are the takeaways from this play? Do your duty to your family, but do not risk your life for a small profit. That is what Maurya has been telling Bartley, but he did not listen. Bless your relations even if they do not listen to you for some reasons. Maurya ought to have blessed her son. Kathleen believes it and I think the audience or the readers would also feel like that. Respect your elders though with different world views. Elders may have a different world view, still respect them. Consider natural forces like the sea and the wind when you embark on the business of life. Even when we live in a concrete house, when there is a huge wind, when there is some earthquake or tsunami, we will be affected. We have to understand the power of nature. Never imagine you can achieve your goal without the favor of the universe. If the universe does not feel that it has to give something to us, we cannot get it. We need to participate in the welfare of the family and the community wholeheartedly. We can find the play as a play of community. All people come together when somebody dies. At the end, we have this takeaway, accept life as it comes to receive the peace that passes understanding. There is a peace at the end of life if we accept life as it is. If we do not accept, we cannot be peaceful. Maurya gains her peace at the end of the play when she loses all her sons, when she realizes she has no more son to lose to the sea. She is peaceful at last. Let us summarize our discussion now. We saw the objectives of looking at the analysis of the play. We saw the character analysis of Maurya, Kathleen and Nora. We also examined the character of Michael and Bartley. We understood the importance of the sea which has a grip over the people of the island. We found the theme, form, language and literary devices used in the play. We also explored certain human relationships, asked a series of questions to understand certain reflections on life. Then we have had some takeaways from the play. The most important takeaway is accept life as it comes, only then you will have peace. Otherwise you will have no peace at all and nobody wants to live a life without peace. Here are some references for you. Do look into these references to learn more about Singh and his play Riders to the Sea and also about life and literature. Thank you.